I have no idea what the audio is going to be like. I will point out if the menu music here sounds loud. I've tried turning it down and I really don't know how to do that. It's possible it's in the radio settings. It's, I've never actually tried that. Let's see if that's the case. I have a whole bunch of music I put in here. Yeah, it does nothing. For whatever reason, I've tried a lot of the audio settings. There's no way to turn down the menu music, but we're just going to have to deal with it. All right, so in any case, in this stream, we're going to be taking a look at American Truck Simulator. This is a game I picked up very recently. I picked it up pretty much for my birthday, and my friend Leo helped me get some of the DLC as well. It was on sale. And I've been kind of looking forward for, to this game for some time. When it first came out, I wanted it because I had experience playing Euro Truck Simulator, but it came out with very little content. Well, four years have passed almost, or very close to it, and now there's more content. It still has a ways to go, but... It's enough content that I felt like I could jump into it, especially with it being heavily on sale. And I've really enjoyed what I've played of it so far. So, let's get going. I'm going to start off by giving you guys a state of the company kind of introduction. So, the company that I have is called Mouse's Movers. As far as things go, I am level 12, very close to level 13. The finances were at 116,000, a little bit over that, which is pretty good, but I do have some loans. So let's take a look at that. So I have three loans. The first loan I took out is this one, the one that has more durations on it. This was to buy my first truck. I have two trucks at the moment. We'll see the trucks in a bit. And then I took two more loans sometime later, about 11 days later. This is to buy my second truck, the truck that I currently have that you can see in the background there. And to upgrade my garage so that I could have more truck slots. Because you start off with a garage that only has one truck slot, only really allows you to, to have one truck. When you start the game, you don't have a truck, and the only work you can do is freelance work for other companies. You make less money because they loan you the truck to do the job with. So, eventually, you're going to want to buy your own truck so you can increase your profit margin. Trucks are expensive, though, which is why I took the first loan. And subsequently, why I took later loans. Hey, Brunswick. You're going to make me want to re-download this game. <laughs> well, I'm still uh, getting into it. I have a decent amount of experience with your truck simulator, which we might take a look at later. I picked up some of the DLC for that when it was on sale as well. So yeah, so let's take a look at the trucks. So the truck that I have right now, I guess we'll just go to Truck Manager and we can showcase it. So I have the Kenworth T680. Uh, this is meant to be a stopgap. So the first truck I built was the uh, the Peterbilt uh, 579. I got this at, I think, level 6. So I did some freelance work to get to that. I bought this truck. It was pretty good. Uh, but I wanted to do some upgrades. At the time that I bought this truck, I think I was level 10. And I couldn't get all the upgrades I wanted. Nor could I get enough money to get the kind of truck that I wanted. So this is meant to be kind of a stopgap. So having two trucks, I did hire another driver. This guy here. Kind of a strange name. Bujo Yu. He's my other driver. He's been working for me a little while. He's doing a little bit better, but it takes time for these guys to build up their profit margin. But these are all the jobs he's done for me. So, on what day he did them on. So he just finished this one and he's on route to finish another one. He'll finish that in three hours. So we should get some cash in three hours. So as far as my goals go, I'm looking to get to level 13. I could buy a new truck, but level 14 is where I really want to be because a number of upgrades uh, will unlock. So the way this game works is when you first start out, if you're to buy your own truck, not very many of the parts are available, but as you level up, more and more parts uh, unlock and you can do more with them. So 
that's pretty much what, you, much what you have. I can showcase what this truck has by just using the truck browser here. I can kind of build the truck that I have. So I have this Kenworth P680. I have the midroof sleeper. I have... So I, because at the time I did, the, I did this at level 10, I have to pick the longer body. I can't use the short one. That's for like the day cabs. So I had to go with at level 10, the six by two. So what this means is that only the rear axle back here is driven. This axle is not, and this is our steering axle. So if you had a six by four layout, which I did have in my first truck, I think I had the six by four 150 gallon uh, setup, then that would mean the back two axles would be driven. So definitely better. And then gearbox, I have, oh wait, first engine. So the engine, I have this one here, the Cummins uh, ISX 15, 500 horsepower, 1,650 foot-pounds of torque at 1,200 RPM. The gearbox I have is the one it also has selected, the, this 18-speed one. That's going to be some of the problem with this game. Uh, it's a lot of gears to work with, and I'm using a controller, and I'm using the sequential manual gearbox setup, and it's a lot of gears to change through. So typically when I'm doing acceleration, I don't struggle with it too much, but when I have to brake suddenly, I oftentimes flub my gears. I don't know which gear to be in, and it's so many gears to choose from. <clears throat> it can be confusing. So I think in the future, I'm going to look to swap this out. Though this is a favorite of a lot of people from what I've been reading in forums and other things. A lot of people really like this gearbox, and it's quite good. It's probably let down by the chassis setup. Probably would do better with a 6x4 layout because I suspect this one would be really good for hauling heavier loads because you got a lot of gears at that lower end which would really help you pull that weight in any case I think that's enough of talking about what the truck that I have is and everything that's more or less the, the basics of it so let's get going at the moment I just took a nap at a dealership this Kenworth dealership I didn't get fuel, but I think I have at least a half a fuel tank, maybe more. I think we'll be all right if I do a shorter range job. So let's see what jobs we have available. So we go to the job market, freight market. Quick job is when you're doing freelance work. You don't need a truck to be able to do these. Freight market, you do need a truck, so we'll do that one. We're in Seattle, so I'm going to click on that. That will sort all the jobs with the origin of Seattle makes things a little easier when you're doing freelance work this doesn't matter because you'll be instantly teleported to wherever the job is when you have your own truck you have to drive to the jobs so that does matter and i have it sorted by route length as the main thing a lot of interesting jobs here so there's a lot of symbols these symbols will tell you a lot about the cargo this one has almost all of them <laughs> so it's heavy uh, it's high value cargo. It's a, just a standard delivery. This is pretty much what speed they want it at. So you'll see this one down here is an important delivery. They want it faster. So the amount of time you have to do the job is less. And then we have fragile cargo. There's a few other things, uh, that are, uh, available. You have to have some traits to be able to have some of these things. Well, all of these things will add to the value of the contract. There's also an articulated trailer. I only have five minutes to accept this job, so it's at the Kenworth dealer that I'm probably already at, but I think I'm going to pass on this one. This one, the reason why it has the white and red stripes, is this one has a police escort. Very heavy cargo. I don't know. My truck might be able to do it. I have a all right power engine. It's that 6x2 chassis that might be the problem with hauling something really this heavy. Uh, furniture. This doesn't pay very much. Yeah, shifting auto would be easier. Uh, oh, and for people that haven't played this game, just so you understand, you can play this game a number of different ways. I'm using a Xbox One controller. I do have a steering wheel, but I just don't have the room for it right now. So maybe eventually I'll set it up. But that's the way I play it. But you can play it with mouse and keyboard just fine. It works just fine. Uh, and then there's three different ways you can play. 
You can play uh, with an automatic transmission and it will do all the gear shifting for you, which is recommended for a keyboard because it's a little tricky to do all that work. You can do a sequential gearbox, which all that means is on my controller, I have a gear up and a gear down button, and I do that one after the other. So I can't really skip gears without hitting the button multiple times. Uh, and then there's the H shifter shut up, set up, and that's like a traditional like uh, manual uh, gearbox if you have like a steering wheel, which I do have with my steering wheel, but I, again, I don't have it set up. So those are the kind of the three ways you can play, and there's a lot of ways that you can set up your key binding and stuff. So it's pretty uh, flexible with you setting stuff up, which is nice. So this is just a standard delivery. There's nothing else about it. You get an idea of what the cargo is. So it's just going to be furniture, how much it weighs, where it's going. And if I click on it, it shows me the route. So we're going to go over to Astoria down here. Uh, how much we're going to get paid for the job and then how much we're being paid over the number of miles that we're driving. So this gives you an idea of the value of the trip. Like this one here, this is worth a lot, but keep in mind it has a lot of these factors going on, which is gonna raise the value. So $50 per mile is a lot. How far is that trip? 157? We're going down to Portland. This one's tempting. I don't like these big, long articulated trailers. It will be really tricky for me to handle. We might want to start with a simpler job, even though that is a very high-value job. Okay, this one's going to Seattle to Portland. Some scrap metals. This is not a bad-paying job for the distance. This one's a little better. But it's further distance. I think I'm just going to do the scrap metal one, because it starts at Kenworth, which is possibly where we are. There might be more than one dealership in this city. We'll go ahead and select that. Set as GPS destination. We'll pop into the game here. All right, let me really quickly open up the map so we know where we're going. Yeah, see, there's more than one Kenworth dealership. So that was why I didn't take that five minute job because I wasn't sure if it was here or over here. So. All right, that, that'll be fine. We'll drive there. I think I had multiple hours to do the job. I could double check that. So this is the one we have set. Yeah, I have two hours and 50 minutes. We have a couple other bits of information uh, here that's important to note. Uh, what time they expect it. So the main time you're worried about is this end time. So uh, 1244 p.m. So we're at 314 in the morning. We've got quite some time to do this. And considering that it's only 173 miles away, which is estimated time of three hours, 22 minutes, there's probably going to be things that will make that trip longer, but that'll be fine. So let's go ahead and do this. Oh, one thing I didn't mention. Where's my headquarters? My headquarters is in, is in Salem, Oregon, right down, right down here. So we're not, uh, we will end up not too far away from where my garage is. Okay. Let's drive. All right, so first I have to start my truck up. I don't know if my lights are on because I went to I went to bed when it was daylight. So we'll turn those on. Okay. Let's get going. First we have to put it in gear. So I put it in the third gear because there's just so many gears to go with. And the acceleration for this is pretty good. I'm still kind of getting back into things, so I'll probably flub a lot of my gear changes here, but that's all right. All right. I can kind of cheat because I have this mirror that lets me see around corners in the front. I really love that mirror. I'm glad I installed it. it lets me see around corners and lets me see the uh, other lanes really nicely. All right, let's get going here. We've got 35 mile an hour speed limit. I guess I should go over the interface real quick. So basic stuff. There's multiple views you can do. I like to be in the, uh, the the driver's seat because most important thing that I'm looking at is right here. This is the rev counter. When you are doing anything with manual shifting, this is pretty much the main thing that you're worried about. You also have your, your speedometer and other, other things. Uh, I have an information panel that I can switch what information is given to me. I just have it on my fuel tank. So I have 135 gallons in the tank and it has an estimated distance, I think, of how much I could travel with that gas. That's probably not very accurate though. That seems quite high for 135 gallons. But in any case, over here is my navigation. There's also a lot of information here. My current speed what gear I'm in. Now, remember, my gearbox has up to 18 gears, and most of those gears are going to be at lower speeds. It's really the last three to four that are highway speeds. I think I can get up to, like, maybe the 14th, 15th gear in, like, four to 40 miles an hour. 
so everything over that. <laughs> and then here's my fuel. I mean, we already see the fuel here too, but another, another way you can see that. How tired I am. The more this fills up with blue, the more tired I am. And if it gets all the way to the top, it'll turn red. And then your guy's pretty sleepy. If you keep driving while it's red, you'll start getting fines. And I think bad things might happen beyond that, but I've never really driven it that far. Whether or not I have any emails, I don't at the moment, so that's not really... Usually you get these when you level up, I think. What time it is, how much money I have, and then some information down here, ETA. Uh, we've got what, what time I'm expected uh, to get there, uh, how many miles I have to drive, and how many minutes it expects that to take. Now that's to get to my job, not the job finishing. Uh, if I click on this or I hit F6... Uh, we see delivery information. I haven't picked up my my cargo yet. Uh, so we'll see that. We'll take a look at that once I've gotten it. And then finally, you have a thing here for the information about your truck, uh, how much damage it has. I just repaired my truck at the Kenworth dealership. You can take damage a couple different ways, running into things, or just wear and tear, which is pretty much what happened to me with having to repair it. I've been driving this truck a few thousand miles at least now. So your trailer and your cargo damage. We don't have a trailer or cargo, so it's not really anything we have to worry about right now. And I forget what this does. Oh, okay. Messages. All right. We don't have any messages to look at. All right. So that's just a rundown of the interface, just so you know what to look at if you've never seen this game played before. Okay. So 35 mile an hour speed limit. So I'll try and stick to that because otherwise I might get in trouble. You can go over it, but the game is kind of a stickler to your speed limit. Um, got a green light. Let's go down a couple gears. We need to turn left here. So we need this truck to get out of our way. All right, go. Uh, I need to go on this fork. So because it's kind of the middle of the night or a very early morning, we're probably not going to see a lot of traffic. All right, we're getting off right away. I don't know exactly what this is going to look like. Should probably be going faster so I could get on the highway speed. Alright. I think we're gonna take this. Oh, I'm going too fast. Whoops. <laughs> Use a little bit of Jake braking there. Yeah, we get off on this. So if you hear that noise, that's me using. It's called an engine brake in the game, but in real life, you might call it a Jake brake or a compression brake. More or less, what that does is it helps me use the gears to slow down. Uh, for those of you guys that don't live in the U.S., uh, I'm not sure if this is true in other other places in the world, but in the U.S., there's a lot of communities where the Jake Break is uh, not legal to be used. <laughs> and the reason why is because it, well, I don't know if you heard it, but it makes this, at least in this truck, it makes this jackhammer noise. <laughs> it's quite loud. So for noise ordinance reasons... A lot of communities don't allow you to use that, but in this game, it doesn't really matter. You can use it freely. I wasn't really going the speed limit much here, but that's all right. But anytime you hear that noise, I'm using the Jake Brick. <laughs> I don't really need to use it right here. I was just having fun with it. But it's, it's a good way to slow down uh, if you just need to slow down a little bit. And I'm going to be in fourth gear to start. We don't have any cargo, so it'll be fine. Put on our left turn signal. I don't have to put on turn signals, but I like to role play, so. So my goal, I'm not going to probably hit it, especially when I'm in lower gears, is to change before I get to 1500 reps. Uh, we need to be on the left lane. Alright. We're going to need to switch back down. Alright. It's going to take me some work to get on top of my gear changes, though. Okay. Going. I think we turn at the next light. My turn before that. I'm going to have to take a look at the road here. Uh, 
Alright, so we have to wait for our turn signal, which may either come now or... Yeah, it's gonna come now. I have to wait for these guys to get in my way, though. And 25 miles an hour here. So yeah, the leeway the game gives you is only one mile an hour. Any more than that, it starts yelling at you. Time to sip some tea. Then I go to do it, and the light, <laughs> the light changes. Well, that's a good thing, right? All right, so we go up to this thing to take a job. Okay, we open up that interface. It will keep this marked with what we're tracking GPS. We do have this other job here that does pay. Did this job refresh? Because I think that was the one we only had five minutes to take. Maybe I'm thinking of a different job. This one's really tempting, but I'm not going to take it. It's a little early for me and the still, and I'm still kind of waking up, so I'd prefer not to take a hard job. Uh, sometimes the AI can be tricky, so Brunswick is saying, I don't know if they still do this, but the AI car used to not follow the rules of the right away, and I hated it. Yeah, every once in a while, I there's definitely problems with that. Uh, the problem with this game is any car accident that happens is considered to be your fault, so you get fined for it. Even if the AI car literally turns left into you, it's still your fault, which is kind of annoying. But yes, the AI does have some lapses of judgment at times. What happened to my mirrors? For whatever reason, my guy was looking way up in the... All right, let's find our cargo. I go the wrong way to get to it. It's probably in the back here. Yeah, it's probably just around this corner. There it is. Okay. Now for this bit, I usually go into third person because I just find it. You can do this stuff in first person if you really want to. Depends on how much you want to simulate things. But I personally just find it a lot easier to back into a trailer this way. So you just need to drive, you know, close enough. It gives you a little bit of leeway. That should do it. Okay, go back into first person. All right, let's get up into third gear. All right, I gotta get in the mindset of taking turns wide so we don't hang up our trailer. I've already forgotten what it is I'm hauling. We can always check that though. I meant to, I meant to show this to you once we have it. So we're hauling scrap metals, uh, destination, uh, the expected time, how much time, well, how much the job's going to pay me, how much time we have remaining of what they expect. And if we wanted to take a rest stop, how far away it would be? That doesn't seem like that's right. Next rest stop in 13 hours. There should be places I can rest real close. Oh, okay, I don't know what that means. We can cancel our current job if we really want to, which I'm not going to do because there's no reason to do. I just wanted to show that interface to you before we got too much into things and I forgot. Okay, so our first problem is going to be getting it out of here. Okay, we need to go right. Oh, the light's on. <laughs> we don't want to miss the light. Take it wide. 
Probably too wide, but that's alright. <laughs> oh, 25. Okay. So when my speed turns red like that, it's telling me I'm going too fast. Just barely making this light. Alright, then we get on the highway. 35 here. Okay, just where that guy turned is where we're turning. Alright, the lights worked out for us. And this is the one area this truck struggles, is just going up slopes. It's doing all right because we're on a fairly low gear. I know 13 doesn't sound low, but okay, we need to get over because we are going to Portland. So you see on the navigation where it has those arrows over to the left, that's telling me to get over to the left. I will point out that sometimes that is not accurate. It will tell you to get into a lane that you don't need to be in. And then later it'll tell you to get back out of that lane, which is annoying. So sometimes it looks it's a good idea to look at your route anyway, just to make sure you're going the direction you really want to be going. So to do that, all I have to simply do is hit the map key. And I can see what my route looks like. So if there's ever a turn off, and I can zoom in and stuff. I'm not exactly sure which one I'm supposed to be taking. This is be this can be a way to confirm it. So I might do this from time to time. It's also, it pauses the game when you do this. So if you need to, you know, take a sip of a drink, like I'm about to do. Or any number of other things, you have that time to do it. I'm wondering how much my other driver, how that job's going. If you see those yellow uh, arrows there, that's a part of the game. Like that road is there, but it doesn't technically exist for the game. So I can't go that way. So it's telling me don't go this way. All right, we need to start slowing down here. Especially as we'll probably slam into the back of this guy. So I'm using a combination of my brakes and the Jake brake to slow down. Shift up. Oh shit. I hate when the AI does this. I'm just going to fly past him. <laughs> so the AI, when there's a merge lane, sometimes they'll just sit in that lane. Oh, I'm still my turn signal on. And, and, like, not move for a long period of time. Ah, oh, shit. I gotta go into a way station. And there's cars in my way, so I'm just gonna have to brake. Because if I don't do this, I'm gonna get in trouble. Uh, let's... Alright. So yeah, whenever it pops up this way station, if it's red, that means you gotta do it. If it's green, you're bypassed and you don't have to do it. In this case, we weren't lucky. And we gotta do this. If you're curious why this is a thing, uh, this is just to make sure that the weight of the truck is following the... the log that... what it's supposed to weigh, and they, they check it throughout your route. So, there's our gross weight. And if there is a disc discrepancy, they have records of when that happened. I'm probably going too fast, yeah. <laughs> There's a speed limit in these things. Sometimes the speed limit's quite annoying because it lasts almost the entire way station. Alright, so we gotta be mindful here because there's quite a lot of traffic. It looks like there's a clearance after this white truck. Um, I do not want to be in this lane. Okay. Way station successfully navigated. Alright. So there's an area up ahead where the navigation is telling me to get over a lane. But this is one of those areas where I'm going to question the navigation on whether or not that's accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and pop open my map. So it's telling me to get over a lane. I don't see a reason why, because it looks like I'm going straight through all the way as far as I can see at the level of vision I'm looking at. So I'm not going to believe that. I'm just going to stay in the lane I'm in. 
And how much you want to bet it's going to tell me to go back out at some point. So we'll keep an eye on that. So 60 miles an hour is our speed limit. So it told me to go in, but that's an exit only. That's what that sign right there says. So how much you want to bet it tells me to come back out? Yeah, I can see it right now. So right there it's telling me get back out. So that's just something you have to be mindful of. Sometimes the navigation lies to you a little bit. I mean, it eventually tells you the truth, but what happens if you got in that lane in heavy traffic and it was hard to get back out? That would have been a problem. So, sometimes I double-check it. Like that. Just to be certain it's telling me the truth. Also, I can use, like, the, the road signs and just common sense to be like, yeah, I'm supposed to be going to Portland. That's not where that sign takes me. Okay. And we're on the highway. A lot simpler. I'm pretty much in the highest gear I can be in. Which at this point is more for fuel efficiency's sake. And we're going to stick to, you know, 60 miles an hour or so. Because that's what the speed limit is. Uh-oh. Alright, well this is something that can happen. It happens a lot during the night. So... An accident or a road construction or something has happened, so we are being detoured. Which is unfortunate because this area doesn't have an easy turnaround. It looks like we get to turn around here, though, so it wasn't that far away that we had to turn around. So we just come off here and then immediately get back on the other side. Let me take a look at the map, see where it's trying to get me to go. So, yeah, we would have been going this way. This section here is blocked, so we're just going to go back around to that way. We're going to take this left bit here. Alright, so I need a turn signal to be able to go. So. I can't really see the arrow, but I can see if it turns green. Go into the proper gear here. I don't think I need my turn signal anymore. I think everybody knows which way I'm going. Alright. We might be here a little while. Okay. There we go. We need to immediately get back on. And there we go. Detour successfully completed. That's one of the things that's kind of fun. I don't remember that in Euro Truck Simulator back in the days when I played that. Granted, I played it a lot when it came out, so maybe they've added stuff like this to Euro Truck Simulator since. Oh, and there's our income from our other driver down in the right corner. He made me quite a bit of cash. That's good. Okay, we want to get over because we don't want to... Actually, no, we want to stay here because we want to go to Portland. See, the, the GPS didn't tell me which lane to be in. I still don't think it did. Uh, it might not have told me that because... Oh, it's 45 here. What the hell? Just use our... Okay, looks like we're clear. Merge. Alright, it should be 60 once we get to the sign. There we are. But as much as it's like an inconvenience, that kind of detour stuff I think adds to the immersion of the game. So I'll have to see. I, I just started playing Euro Truck Simulator uh, a little bit. I haven't really done enough to really see 
How much has changed since last I played it? Okay. So our arrival time has adjusted quite a bit. We're at 8.21 a.m., but we have until, what, 12.40 almost to get there. So plenty of time. Looks like we got some traffic up ahead. Probably don't need our lights anymore. Not really anything of concern at the moment. So I like the Washington, Oregon area. Uh, it's got pretty reasonable speed limits. And it's, it's, I would say it's similar to the area I live in as far as, I mean, maybe not terrain and everything, but like as far as the speed limits and stuff, they seem to follow that the pretty close. So not too much of a divergence of what I'm used to. I haven't shown you on the map where I've been, but we can just discuss it while I'm driving here, because what else are we going to do? So I went down into California. I don't really care for California. It seems like there's a pretty blanket 55 mile an hour speed limit for uh, trucks, which is not fun. Uh, I mean, it, I, it was cool going into San Francisco. I liked that, but didn't like the blanket 55 mile an hour. So I went into Nevada after I was in California. Nevada has, I think, upwards of an 80 mile an hour speed limit, which is, uh, well, it's nice if you want to go fast. Probably didn't help the fuel economy for this truck, but. But yeah, I like Nevada. The big problem with Nevada is just there was a lot of, like, variance in the speed limits. So you would be going 80, and then you'd be going, like, 65, and then you'd be going, I don't know, 30 or something. And it you're not given a lot of distance. Oh, no, wait, I don't want to get over yet. Not given a lot of distance to adjust sometimes. And then you go from 65 to 80... And, uh, it can be tricky to get your car, your truck up to speed after you've been forced to slow down, you know, so. But I like Nevada okay. I, I want to explore more areas, though. Oh, right here. While we're talking about, let's see the map as it is per the DLC that I have and what's in the game. So I have all the area DLC. So you have Washington, Oregon. These are both DLC. California, Nevada, Arizona, you get for, uh, well, for free. You get it if you buy the base game, right? So those are the three states you get base game. And then there's Utah and New Mexico. Idaho, I think, is coming soon. And Colorado, I think, is the next one as well. Like, that's another one that's slated. So... That's pretty much, and if you're looking at the map and you see a yellow road, that's somewhere I've been. Gray roads are somewhere I have not been. So there are a few towns in Washington and Oregon that I have not been to. And then California, I was only really limited. So I came down to Redding, uh, was in Sacramento, Santa Cruz, and San Francisco. And then I didn't want to be in California anymore. So I went to Carson City, spent some time in Reno, and did some things over here. And then came back into Oregon. And that, that's pretty much, you know, where I've been at the moment. Most of my jobs have been in this these two states. Okay, we're up to 55. We're going uphill, though, so it's going to take me some time. I could downshift. Well, now we're going downhill, so... But in fact, I'm probably not going to accelerate much here. To let the slope areas. Okay, now it's telling me to get over. Do I believe that? Oh, it's zoomed out now. <laughs> yes, I believe that because we're almost at our destination. Okay. Okay, nobody in the mirror.
So as far as this game goes, this is kind of a trial run of whether or not I want to cover this in the future. As I've been enjoying it a lot in my, my own time, but I wasn't really sure if it was a good stream game or not. And I, I kind of have this idea in my head of, of doing a Sunday stream regularly with this game and then having music play. But I wanted to see how it went first. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to shift down quite a bit here. We're going up a hill a lot, and I kind of let my rivs dip a little too much. All right. We need to get over. Do I believe that? Yeah, okay. And I might do some Euro Truck Simulator too, as I, as I said. Kind of change things up from time to time. Alright. Probably gonna need to start slowing down here. Okay, so we need to be over one, I think. At least that's what it's telling me to do. I just don't want to collide with that truck. Yeah, he's not letting me over. We're going to break a lot here. Yeah, I don't want to collide with an ambulance. That would be that would be bad for him. <laughs> All right, it's 45 here and we're pretty much at 45. Okay, we're going right at the light. I need to downshift a lot here. You see, that's one of those situations where I didn't really know what gear to put it in. Ah, uh, we didn't make it. I probably could go anyway, but we'll just stay here. No, I can go because it's a red light. You can turn right on red. Looks clear. Uh, good. We have fuel here. I want to get that. So the trick of this is I have to hit that green logo to um, get the job going. Ah, shit. Okay. People keep trying to turn into me. Oh, it's too late. I already turned. All right, so we got to hit that. All right, so this is one of the interesting things about this game. You get three choices of how you want to deal with your cargo. You can put it where you need it, and you get a, a significant experience bonus. I think the bonus depends on how hard this is, because it can be up towards of 90. You can play it safe, and usually this requires you to back into a place. This requires you just to pull forward. This, you can just skip it all together. You get no experience bonus, but as, if I hit this button right now, instantly... Uh, the cargo would be taken and we, we'd be done. I'm gonna, I always do this one. I have a hard time backing up trailers, and this is just kind of too difficult for me. Maybe with more tr practice, I'd be able to do it. But for right now, we're just going to do this. Now, if you choose something and you find out it's too hard, it does give you opportunities to just take this route, right? But the problem is with that is that you can't... Like, let's say you pick this one. You can't get this one instead. You're always going to get this one as your alternative. So just keep that in mind. All right, so... Hopefully, I'm not going to run into anything. Like that wall. I think we're good. So right then, it's giving me the opportunity if I didn't want to do the uh, this. So I have to just park in the green box. I want to put this in third person, just freeze of mind. Usually, you want to take it a little wide if you're... Needing to get the trailer straightened out a little bit. All right, let's start turning in. I might not have gotten it on this attempt, but we'll see. Straighter out. There we go. Once you get the the press T, or in this case, you might be down because I've I've given myself a second button prompt. You're pretty much done. 
You switch back into first person. And there you have it. Job done. How high is my arm wrestling skill? Well, we just leveled up, so... <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have any ability to level it up. Okay, so base reward, proficiency bonus based off of our level. There's no other bonuses because this is just a standard contract with no other uh, stipulations. And then we get our trailer delivery bonus. You see a lot more things here if the cargo has those traits. So hopefully we can pick up a job. Our second job here will be maybe more interesting. So let's go ahead and continue. Because I leveled up, I get to pick a point to level up in. So let's just go over what I can level up. So we have hazardous cargo, and they're in different categories. So we can go over the categories. So we have class one, explosives, such as dynamite, fireworks, or ammunition. Class two, gases. So that gives you a number of different types of gases here that it could be. We have class three, flammable liquids. The ones colored in yellow are ones I've already taken. Same thing with the text. Class four is flammable solids. Class 6 is toxic and infectious substances. And then class 8 is corrosive substances. So to be able to haul this cargo, you have to level up the trade. This pretty much gives you the license to be able to transport these things. Then other than that, we have long distance. The more points you have in this, the further trips you'll be able to do. But it also gives you a bonus if you're doing longer trips. Both experience and pay. You have high value cargo. To be able to deliver high value cargo, you have to have at least one point. And then you also get a reward increase at the more levels you get. But you only need one point to get the ability to deliver it. Same thing with fragile cargo and just in time delivery. So just in time delivery is those ones where it's the more important ones. Although if we want urgent deliveries, we do want another point. And I think I'm going to take that. Uh, other than that, we have fuel economy. All, all this does is make it so you consume less fuel the more levels you have. So, I already have three levels in that. I already have three levels in this, which unlocks a thousand mile deliveries, which I think is fine for now. I could unlock another class of uh, dangerous materials, hazardous cargo. But I think I'm going to go with the just-in-time delivery here. We'll apply. Okay. Let's see how my other driver did. So my other driver just did a delivery. Increasing his profit a day by a significant margin. We can see in the log exactly what he did. So he uh, brought some cargo from Salem, which is our headquarters, to Santa Cruz. It was that long of a trip. It's a pretty long trip. And it was probably valuable cargo because he got paid quite a lot. It's actually the, the most high paying job he's taken so far. Uh, your drivers level up just like your character does. So these are the stats that he's managed to get. And I've set him to balance training policy. You can kind of change it. So if I wanted him to start emphasizing the hazardous cargo, I could tell him to do so or any other thing. But balance is fine for me. Okay. So that's all good. So one thing I'm going to want to do is just take a look at the, my truck and see what state it's in. So we're pretty much where we left. So the, the trailer's still there. There should be fuel just to the other side of me. So I do want to go get some because it's been a while since I've refueled. I guess there's only one way out of this way. Okay. They're going to have to reverse. I just don't want to run into whatever this thing is. Like just a bulldozer. Uh, that's probably good enough. Hopefully we can make this turn. It looks okay. I just not worry about the fact that we're probably shredding our tires by driving over that if this was real life, but... <laughs> okay, so there's fuel just on the other side here. Uh, now my guy, the blue, is filled up, so we're about half full. I could probably do another short range trip. I can't see that way. Yeah, there's a car coming. Well, if there's somebody coming, I'm going to get hit. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm going to give myself a save after I get gas here as well, because it's been a little while. There's auto saves and things too, so if you forget, it's not a big deal, but... 
Okay, so we need to turn off our engine, and then we just hold in, for me, the A button, and it fills up gas. I have a lot of uh, fuel to fill up here, so this is going to cost quite a bit. Yeah, $386. What did the sign say how much diesel cost? Uh, I can't see it from here. All right, well, that's good enough. Start our engine. And when we drive away, we pay them a fee. There we go. This is a good enough stop spot to spit. Okay, 321 for diesel. All right, let's find our new next job. So job market, freight market. We're currently in Portland. All right, so I don't want a super long trip because our guy will get tired. We could do this quicker job. So Portland to Newport. We have an hour and eight minutes to get there and they expect us by 4.15 p.m. So probably plenty of time to do the job. It's not the best pay, but it's not terrible. Honestly, this isn't, this is actually probably better for us to go to Tacoma and do the frozen food, even though it's not an urgent delivery. Let's see what else we got though. I'm not sure I want to take something like this, especially as I only had 21 minutes to get to wherever it is. Yeah, I have a feeling we're not going to get off easy here because this is going to be a 210 mile trip. I might be able to pull that off, but I don't know how tired my guy's going to be trying to do it. It pays well, though. It's an urgent delivery. I don't like Port Angeles. I don't like going there if I can avoid it. We do have some aromatics, which would be flammable and is a urgent delivery. But... Kenwick, Washington is quite a distance. That's not that much different, though. It's actually shorter time-wise. You know what? Let's grab the flammable stuff. Not a big difference in weight. But we get two factors paying us. It's a quick delivery. They need it by 5.20 p.m., so we even have more time to do it. It offer expires in 37 minutes though, so we have to get there quickly. So I'm gonna set it as just GPS, but I have to look at the map to see where it is, because if it's too far away, we're not gonna get there in 37 minutes. Okay, it's just across the street. Okay. The problem with there is I, I picked Portland, but you know, Portland's a big big city and we're kind of on the outskirts skirt. So Port Portland's probably going to be like all of all of this area here. So if it was over, like, over here somewhere, or over here, I mean, you know, that would have taken more than 37 minutes to get to, probably. But thankfully, it was just, you know, pretty much across the street here, so I should be able to get to it in 37 minutes. Okay, so we just go out this way, as long as we're not running... Ah! <laughs> thankfully, I don't think I got a, a ticket there. I meant to save it too, didn't I? Did I get a ticket? I don't think I did. We got a little bit of damage. <laughs> Whoops. I meant to look that way. Alright, I wanted to save here, so... My bad. Uh, we'll put it under... I guess job. All right, that's our one mulligan, or our one mistake of the day. Hopefully we don't make any more. Hopefully that didn't hurt my insurance rate. You get a good insurance rate on your repairs if you don't get into accidents. I don't know if that qualified because I didn't get a ticket for it. At least I don't think so. You guys would be a better judge of that. I didn't hear the... I didn't see the symbol. Nor did I, I hear the... The noise that you normally get when you get a ticket. Hold on one second. I do want to check. Uh, diagnostics, I think. So it took a little bit of engine and chassis damage. No, it's not really that big of a deal, though. Oh, and our, my insurance premium didn't change. The 2%, which is pretty good from what I've heard. 
So we lucked out there. That was a mistake on my part. But I guess it was low speed enough that it didn't count as a accident, even though it, it technically was. <laughs> Alright, turn in here. Officer, nothing happened. Don't worry about it. Okay. Turn here. We should be in time. <laughs> 